Hey there Wargamers, welcome to another Tuesday video and this week we are breaking out the chimichangas and we're taking a look at Deadpool and Bob, Agent of Hydra and the Taco Truck. So this is a big beefy one, a lot of people have been waiting for uh, for the Deadpool model, but before we crack into it, as always, if you like the content that you're seeing here, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and leave some comments below. And that goes for all the videos we do here, like not just the uh, the product reviews, the, the unboxings, but you know, any of the battle reports, the painting videos, let me know what you like, okay? Uh, anyway, breaking into this one as well, this is a big box. I don't think we've seen a character box this big since Thanos so far, and there was a lot going in there, but he had his own crisis and uh, ultimate encounter and everything like that. So big stuff going on. So let's crack open and see what we're looking at here. So in the box, we do have a couple models here. We got two bases, some character stack cards, tactic cards, and tokens. And right off the bat, you can see here, there's a couple different ways of, um, of getting Deadpool put together here. So this is a big, beefy box. All right, let's crack it in. And anyone who's watched these videos, we know we're not gonna be doing a deep dive into the characters. This isn't for analysis or anything like that. This is just to take a look at everything. So that's a lot of plastic right there. So we're going to get to that in just a moment here. The instructions should be suitably large. Yeah. So with uh, Deadpool, it looks like we, it looks like the green is all the optional or alternative stuff. Uh, either have them posed on um, the rocket with a foosh or get rid of the foosh. A couple different heads on there. It looks like a couple different arms. You can have his leg kicking up or not. Kind of dig it. Bob, very simple to put together. Not really a lot going on there. Same with the taco truck. Very easy to put together and always nice to have another piece of terrain in the game. All right. Because that's one thing I find this game really benefits from is having lots of terrain that you can interact with. The more stuff that you can throw or destroy or blow up, the better it is. And we've got some really cool stuff coming down the road. So uh, always happy to add to that. So we got ourselves some tokens. We got some more X-Force tokens. We got this big token right there. I don't know what that's for. Four. I guess we might find out a little bit more on the card. And then we got, it looks like an ammo token. So nothing too fancy right there. We got ourselves the tactics card. So we got Chimichangas, an unaffiliated active ability. Deadpool may spend one power to play this card. Add Chimichanga objective token. Okay, so I guess that's what that is. Uh, to the game, Deadpool is holding this token at the end of character activation. If it's holding a chimichanga, it gains one power and remove one damage or special condition. And any character may use the following interact. Chimichanga, uh, interact, pick up chimichanga token. Okay, uh, very suitably Deadpool. We got pretty sneaky, sis. X-Force reactive, which in the power phase, any number of allied X-Force characters may spend two power to play this card. Enemy characters must be within range two of this character that spent power to target them with attacks this round. So if you got a character that you really want to protect, maybe they're holding onto a uh, secure objective or something like that, this is kind of a nice little card for that one. And we got Noink, which is unaffiliated active. During Deadpool's activation, spend two power to play this card. Select one of the following effects. Oh my goodness. If allied cable is within range two of Deadpool, place Deadpool within range two of current position. If allied domino is within range two of Deadpool, Deadpool may use the grenade bounce attack listed on her stack card once this activation without paying its power set cost. <laughs> That's fantastic. If an allied Wolverine that is holding an objective token is within range two of Deadpool, place uh, where did I? Oh, wow. oh geez. Place one objective token held by Wolverine onto Deadpool. Deadpool is now holding the token. This team tactic card does not allow a character to hold more tokens than the crisis specifies. Oh my goodness, it's a hot potato. And then we got, if enemy Bob, agent of Hydra, is within range 2 of Deadpool, you may remove any number of loaded tokens from it. Okay, there is a lot to unpack there. Kind of some cool stuff. So let's take a look at Bob first. And we got three health on one side and three on the other. We got uh, threat of two, medium movement, twos across the board for defense. So he's not very beefy here, uh, but he does have his Hydra pistol for his builder. It's uh, one guaranteed power. We have Excessive Violence, which is a zero power cost, but nine damage and range four. Eh, the character may choose this attack only if it has a loaded token. After the attack is resolved, this character loses all loaded tokens it has. Before damage is dealt, all other characters within range two of the targets suffer two damage. So there's a nice big explosive blast there. And before damage is dealt, this character is thrown away from the target character short. 
this throw is resolved by the player controlling the target character. Then if this character does not have a daze token, it suffers three damage. Oh my goodness. So basically just by show, uh, doing his giant attack, he, he's basically going to daze himself. So that, that's kind of crazy. And we got Hydra Tactics for two. Choose another allied character within range two of this character. Place this character within range one of the chosen character. I think we've seen that on uh, Winter Soldier. So nothing new there. But, you know, placement shenanigans, always love them. We got Make It Spicy Bob for eight power action. This character gains a loaded token. So there we go. So he, he's got to get loaded tokens that way. But it does look like he does start the game with one loaded token. So Bob is the very definition of a uh, glass cannon. On his interest side, though, it looks like he does have an extra little ability. But how? If this character does not have an activated token and would be KO'd by having damage tokens placed on it, it gains a daze token instead. During the cleanup phase, when you would normally flip this character card as a result of a daze token, it remains on its injured side and this character loses 3 power. If at any time this is the only character you control, you lose the game. Bob cannot die. That is amazing. I absolutely love it. I think that's all kinds of awesome jank. All right. We got the Merc with the Mouth. We got Deadpool, who's got four health on one side, six on the other. He is a three threat character, medium movement, three, three, and four for defenses on both sides. We have his Builder, which is a stab so nothing really, uh, nothing really going on there. Then we have Bang, which is uh, not a spender. It's just, you know, four damage, four range. And then on a wild and a hit, it looks like we got Bang Bang, which allows him to do another Bang attack. And then uh, if we have two hits and a wild on that one, we have Bang Bang Bang. So basically he can just kind of like pepper the enemy with his, with his gun. So very appropriate for Deadpool. I dig it. I think it's great. Uh, and then we got his spender attack, three power, six strength, range two, do a denim poke. If this attack deals damage after this attack is resolved, the target character gains the bleed and slow special conditions. <laughs> Basically, he just gets poked in the stomach. Uh, we got Merc with the Mouth for three power. Choose an enemy character within range three of this character. It loses two power. <laughs> Oh, so basically he just annoys them to losing focus. That's amazing. Uh, we have um, uh, I Know Karate. This character may reroll one die in its attack and defense rolls. We have Unicorns, Rainbows, and Sugar Plums dancing through my head. This character cannot be pushed or advanced by effects from, what is that, uh, Mystic Attacks or Enemy Superpowers. And he's got himself a healing factor. So that means at the end of his activation, he gains two health back. That is just amazing. Uh, and do we have anything on the other side? I, I think everything is... Oh, so now we have... Uh, and then on the injured side, we have... All right, now it's serious. This character always counts as healthy instead of injured for the purposes of contesting objectives. That... From what little I know of Deadpool, that screams Deadpool. I love it. I think that's great. Bring him on. So let's take a look at the models here. And we got the taco truck starting off here. And not really a whole lot to say about this. The, uh, the sides look pretty solid. I love the I love the little Deadpool uh, taco symbol on there. Same with uh, this side. But, I mean, it, it's a vehicle. There's not really a whole lot going on there. If you've seen one of the vehicles in the game, you have seen them. Okay. Then we got the main events here. Typical bases. So, we have Bob. Not much going on with Bob. Bob is actually very simple to, uh, to put together and assemble here. There is not many pieces at all uh, for him. And he's got his alternate heads, a couple little uh, accessories there. But otherwise, he's very simple to put together. Nice giant cannon there, his bazooka. Love it. It's great. And then we got Deadpool with all his various options here. And I think he's just going to be a lot of fun to put together. He's got his two various torsos. He's got all the different heads there. He's got his swords. He's got, you know, the rocket with the whoosh and everything like that. Everything looks great. I love the detail on that. For some reason, the, the depth on the foosh just looks fantastic. I, I think that's uh, that's going to take paint really well. Uh, overall, I, I love it. I mean, I'm not a huge, huge Deadpool fan. Don't really care for his comics, but I think this model just really exemplifies what I know about Deadpool, and I think he's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, you guys know the drill. We are going to uh, take a break, get this assembled, and hopefully paint it, and take further looks at it. And we're back. So we got some paint on Deadpool and Bob here. So we're going to take a quick look here, starting with Bob. And right off the bat, you know, 
very simple model. There's not a whole lot going on here. It's just Bob being posed, and I just realized I forgot to paint his eyes. Uh, just Bob being posed in a very confident, you know, he's got that thumbs up, which I think works perfect for um, for that wonderful ability of his where he just uh, just does not die. Uh, not a whole lot of detail on him, so, I mean, this this is actually a model that kind of took some contrast paints kind of nicely. Uh, didn't really have to do a whole lot to, to get him painted up and table ready. And I do just kind of generally dig the look of it. Very, very simple, uh, kind of fun. I, I love the option for the chef's hat, had to give him that one. Um, especially considering he's got the uh, the special hot sauce down there for his, um, for his uh, missiles. Uh, but yeah, all in all, Dig Bob, very fun, very nice model. Deadpool, on the other hand, he has got so much going on with his model on this one. So first off, as you can see, I definitely went a little bit more playful with his option here. He's got the leg kicked up. He's kind of got the, not the hearts on the eyes. I didn't want to kind of go that far, but he, he's a little bit more jubilant in his in his display. He's got the foosh going on with his, uh, with his base. Uh, all in all, I, I think it plays very well to what the popular consciousness of Deadpool is. Uh, I think a lot of that has been kind of been changing from the more hyper-aggressive Deadpool of, of the 90s and early 2000s to the more uh, irreverent, sarcastic, you know, the, the Ryan Reynolds Deadpool, basically. Uh, I dig it. It's, it's a great model. I think he really stands out, all things considered. Uh, oddly enough, I don't think his little foosh thing makes him sort of not fit in with the rest of the models. Uh, if anything, it's one of those uh, it's one of those nice nods to the whole fourth wall breaking that Deadpool just kind of does. He's got some nice details as far as the musculature goes on it. Uh, obviously, I'm not you know it's someone who does a lot of anatomy, so I can't speak if it's completely accurate. But I like the detail on it. It took the shades very nicely. Um, it was actually very easy to paint. Uh, even the eyes, I, I got a little bit of white there. Uh, even the eyes were pretty straightforward to uh, to put together. Not uh, not a whole lot of problems there. Uh, but yeah, all in all, Deadpool was a great model to paint. So that is Deadpool and Bob uh, for Marvel Crisis Protocol. There is a taco truck that goes with it as well, but that is sitting in the terrain pile. Um, and these are the models that most of the people really care about. So these are the ones I wanted to get done. So anyway, that is that. Uh, be sure to leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. And uh, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and keep watching for more content. And thank you so much for, uh, for watching. And as always, happy wargaming.